Since the shooting of a BDF soldier at Valentin camp, there has only been one press release from the government on the incident. Most of that has been reported and released has been independent reports and inv investigations by the media. Chairman of the Belize Progressive Party, Paco Smith, says that the government needs to be transparent on pressing issues as they, that are affecting the country. The government's handling of that situation is less than satisfactory. We have that position because at the BPP, we are all about full disclosure. We're not about um, giving bits and pieces of information or operating in a sort of a clandestine type of um, environment. I believe it is indicative of the willful negligence that we've seen from this administration on several occasions. Uh, this is but a manifestation of the 4A policy that the PUDP, and I include the PUP in this because the policy involving Guatemala is a bipartisan one. I believe that the Minister of Foreign Affairs at one point recently said that he will not talk about the issue of Guatemala unless he has a PUP representative with him. I mean, if the, if the people of Belize need anything to convince them that this whole 4A policy of accommodation, adherence, um, acquiescence, and uh, accommodation is real, what more do you need than a statement like that from the foreign minister? But definitely, the way that the government has been handling this and all instances involving Guatemala's intransigence towards Belize leaves a lot to be desired. The BPP believes that the government has been inadequate and mediocre when responding to the Belize-Guatemala issue. When the situation occurred that Guatemala summarily said that the Sarstoon belongs to them, flying up in the face of international law and the 1859 treaty that has been on the books and acknowledged by Belize and the rest of the world, uh, that sent a clear message. And to say the least, the response that was, was given by the government of Belize was tepid. Uh, it was woefully inadequate. And I will draw upon the release that was done by CARICOM. You know you're in problems when someone claims a part of your territory and the release from your government is much more mediocre than that which is put out by the regional body. I understand that indeed anything that CARICOM puts out is run through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but in an instance where our sovereignty and territorial integrity is basically being taken away bit by bit in no uncertain terms, and your government shows its impotence the way it has, it's a serious situation. And Belizeans uh, across the nation have to become attuned to this because one of the hallmarks of the Dean Barrow administration is a lack of full disclosure. We're seeing it on a daily basis. Smith says that the government's action is far from how the situation should be handled. And, um, the BPP is all about full disclosure, and one of the pillars of our, our style of governance, our preferred style of governance, is consultation. We never look towards hiding things from the people. We shall never do that. Of course, one could argue that when you're in a position of um, authority, being in government, there's certain things that you should and should not say. But I think if you have a, a, a fundamental premise that you want to liaise with the people, consult with the people, and gain consensus when and if possible, then that will set the tone for any administration. So if we were to compare and contrast what is being experienced now through the current administration versus that of our perspective, definitely we would handle things in a more, um, a more, I don't want to say accommodating, but a more amenable fashion with that of the public. 
The recent budget date for the fiscal year 2016-2017 saw a number of concerns brought by the opposition, the People's United Party. They are, not the, they are not the only ones who have an opinion about this budget. Chairman of the Belize Progressive Party, Paco Smith, said there is nothing eye-opening in this year's budget. The BPP's perspective is that it leaves a lot to be desired. In terms of the expenditure, in terms of the focus, it is, for the most part, um, along the lines of what we anticipated. And what we anticipated wasn't anything that would be eye-opening. Um, we believe that in terms of the budget, it is basically indicative of the type of leadership or lack thereof that we've seen for the past two administrations. So the budget is the budget. It's been passed. Um, unfortunately, the process that we go through in terms of our system of governance um, calls for that, and it happens due to the numbers. Of the main concerns about the budget was that the productive sector and the agriculture sector has been shortcoming. Specifically, I'd like to say that in terms of allocations, definitely there is always more room for allocations to be made for the productive sector. Uh, one of the glaring things about this particular budget, as has been in successive budget, budgets prior, is that the agro sector is not given top priority. When we're talking about the agro productive sector, we're talking about the product, productive entities, the productive industries in this nation. And that's what we need to drive this nation forward. And that has been a glaring omission, or shall I say, a depletion in this budget as, as, as it has been in others. Total expenditures budgeted at $1.151 billion, while total revenue and grants are less than estimated at $1.08 billion.